Hi, I'm Brianne Price, and today's leadership quote comes from Dr. Seuss. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. Are you a strategic senior executive assistant thinking about what's next? Whether you're ready for a promotion or loving the job you're in, Nova Chief of Staff's certification course may be just the resource you're hungry for. With over 400 students across 20 countries and rave reviews, students graduate from Nova's hands-on, self-paced online course with the confidence, knowledge, and power to make the move to chief of staff for their executive. But don't take my word for it. Visit leaderassistant.com Nova to find countless testimonials, the course syllabus, and lots of free resources to support you in your career journey. Hey friends, welcome to the Leader Assistant Podcast. It's your host, Jeremy Burroughs, and this is episode 290. Thanks for listening. You can check out the show notes for this episode at leaderassistant.com slash 290 leaderassistant.com slash 290. Get all the links and the transcript and all that fun stuff at the leaderassistant.com slash 290. So today I am excited to be speaking with Brianne Price. Brianne is owner of Mills and May Services. And Brianne, welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm excited to be uh, speaking with you. What part of the world are you in? I am in Denver, Colorado, but West, so close to the mountains. Love it. And are you from that area? I am born and raised Colorado okay. native. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about yourself personally. Do you have cats, dogs, kids, all of the above? <laughs> all of the above. I do not have cats. Um, <laughs> I do have a dog and I have two kids, um, two years old and six years old. And then um, my husband is a paramedic lieutenant um, here in Denver. So that's me. Awesome. And what do you like to do when you're not working? Uh, we love the mountains. Um, we're 30 minutes from some really great hiking trails and um, just anything outside, enjoying the 360 days of sunshine. Right. We have like five that don't count. <laughs> right. right. Um, so yeah, we love that. Exploring new coffee shops is also my favorite. So yeah. Cool, cool. And do you, when you do the mountains, do you, are you like the crazy, like, I'm going to hike for nine hours today and I'm going to camp at the top and then hike back? Or are you like, I'm going to drive up to the trailhead and hike a mile? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, with kids, that has changed a lot. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've done a 14er before, um, but that was many, many years ago kids yeah. now it's like if we can make it a mile that's a success <laughs> so no i'm a colorado native but not the crazy right right well, <laughs> no offense to any colorado natives <laughs> yeah i mean i remember when my kids were younger you know my youngest son especially i remember it was mm -hmm. like i had to like carry him uh -huh. we were hiking trails and i'm like all right yeah. this is getting old the, yeah <laughs> i mean we got the hiking backpacks so where nice. you stick your kid in it so nice. those help some, <laughs> cool. but well, yeah. tell us about your career now. So, you know, you have an interesting story. Um, yeah. you started off, uh, I, I think as a teacher and then eventually mm -hmm. worked your way into the assistant world. So tell us a little bit about yeah. that journey. Yeah, totally. Um, I honestly would never have expected that I would be sitting here today having a conversation um, about business or assisting. Um, I went to school to be an elementary school teacher. Um, I taught first grade and then second grade and then preschool, um, which in some ways I was telling you is not that much different than the business world, mm -hmm. um, managing children. So um, yeah, so I taught until I had my daughter, who is my second, and um, just couldn't manage being out, uh, being away from home and 
um, needed something a little bit more flexible. So I was crazy enough to, I had heard about virtual assistant work. I didn't even know what that meant. Um, and I put together a Facebook post, put it up and I had eight job offers in 24 hours um, because the industry is massive mm -hmm. as we know. Um, and I, yeah, I took two clients at the time, um, an executive coach who's also an author and, um, a pelvic floor physical therapist. So very opposite worlds. Um, I've since added a gym owner as well to my, uh, repertoire <laughs> and, um, I love it. Yeah. It's been great. Kind of a different thing. I know you've mentioned it in your podcast, but being an assistant is something new every day. And, um, especially having three different executives to work for has been, um, awesome, challenging, but, um, last year I had a lot of friends that came to me and they were like, you're a virtual assistant, but what in the world does that even mean? Um, and how can I do that? And uh, so I coached a bunch of my friends, basically. I was like, I don't know, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and finally this year in February, I launched the second half of Mills and May services. And, um, I now help, um, coach more so remote assistants mm -hmm. slash executive assistants. Virtual assistant has a harder, name to it, um, that I'm learning and, um, yeah. And then I help them connect with end clients or business owners. Um, I, I deal more with a small to medium sized businesses. So, um, yeah, it's wild ride. Um, but I love it and nice. yeah, it's been really good. Awesome. So what has been the maybe biggest difference and then i'll ask about the biggest similarity you know what i mean yeah. like what's what's, yeah. what's been the biggest difference between being a teacher preschool mm -hmm. first grade second grade and now assisting uh business yeah owners? and then totally. what's, been the, what's been the most uh similar yeah what, <laughs> however you say that <laughs> yeah no i love it yeah that's a great question um <laughs> The first answer that comes to mind is the wardrobe. <laughs> I actually have to like wear business clothes now. <laughs> um, I used to wear clothes that you could get paint on. So that's different. Right. Um, I'm learning how to dress myself. Um, but I think the biggest difference has been um, a mindset shift in identity. Um, I was so rooted in being a teacher um, that when I was like, I actually don't think that's where I want to be right now. It was hard to walk away and um, to have that imposter syndrome of like, okay, well now I'm in the business world, but who am I? And what do I like? I don't belong here. Um, my, the author that I work for launched her fourth book in March of 23 and I had just come on in September of 22. So I came in hot <laughs> and um, was sitting in these like massive PR and marketing meetings with these high level executives of the book publishing companies. And I was like, mm. I don't belong here. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I was Googling, like, what does this mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> what are they talking about? Um, and it was still successful. Like we made it. <laughs> But um, that was the biggest thing was just owning that. Yes, I am a business owner now. And also like I am a like a good executive assistant and I can own that. Um, and I do belong in the business world. <laughs> so that's been the biggest difference for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the similarities, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but yeah. Um, I love people and people don't change a whole lot. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are innately in people, um, whether you're an executive of a Fortune 500 company or you're a preschooler. <laughs> um, right. And so I think that there's just a lot of like 
learning <laughs> that comes with being with people um, in the messiness of people. Um, and then also like, um, also that was my executive. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. See, I love I know. it. I love it. You know, we what? assistants listening are like trying to listen to this episode and their executives pinging them. And then now your yeah. executives pinging you. So it's totally it's, real. Yeah. Totally real. Yeah. I actually, I put it on do not disturb, but it came through. <laughs> um, that's life. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I would just say the similarities are people are people and you got to love them through it. Um, and then also like being a preschool teacher, I had to wear a lot of different hats and I had to manage a lot of things at the same time which is exactly what you do as, as an executive assistant. You wear a lot of hats and you manage a lot of things at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Totally. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So what, you know, at being a preschool teacher, first grade, second grade teacher, you got to have passion. You have to have, you have to care about the kids. Mm -hmm. um, how much is, of that has transferred over into your business yeah. with Mills and May services and connecting uh, companies with assistants and, and yeah, supporting totally. executives. Like, is there that, you know, what, what is that innate, you know, is it, is it helping people caring about people? What gets you excited about the yeah. world that you're in now? That is a great question. Um, and yes, <laughs> all the things. <laughs> so um, one of the really cool things, I guess there's several facets to what you just asked, but um, one of the really cool things that I get to do in Mills and May services, which with coaching and connecting is um, asking remote assistants, um, whether they've been in the game for a while or they're brand new and saying like, what are you passionate about? Because I think we lose that as assistants. We're like, me? Are you talking about me? Um, and then, yeah, just getting to ask them, like, what are you passionate about? Um, and then I, so I create like a profile on those remote assistants. And then what I get to do is ask business owners, what are you passionate about? And also what do you hate doing? <laughs> Mm -hmm. What is bogging you down to be the most effective? Um, and so my passion is asking other people, like, what are you passionate about? Um, and then I get to connect those two people that have strengths in different areas in a way that like, they're actually going to be the most effective for their company. Um, so I get super excited about that. <laughs> and yeah, I'm sure like a ton of it is helping people. Um, as a teacher, you kind of get to do the like behind the scenes molding of a person <laughs> um, in a way. And that's what you get to do as an assistant too, of like assisting and helping, but like molding as we go to grow the company. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, that's that's what gets me super excited. I actually, um, just the other day, I, I work with a lot of remote assistants that are like college age or um, like stay-at-home moms is definitely a niche for me because mm -hmm. that's what I am. Um, but actually, I've been working with a lot of people that are um, like on their way, the retirement bubble, um, where they are like good on retirement, benefit wise. Um, but just kind of want that travel money and also like still use their brain for mm -hmm. things. Um, and I asked a woman uh, a couple weeks ago, I said, what are you passionate about? And she looked at me and was like, nobody's ever asked me that question. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, let's tap into that because we need to know. Um, so yeah, that's what gets me excited. And I could go on, yeah, I love <laughs> but it. that's, that's what I love. Love it. What, uh, let's talk about confidence for a minute. So yeah. what is the, what have you learned about confidence? And, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, in your notes when, when we scheduled the interview, uh, joining a big PR marketing meeting in the first few months as an EA and having no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how have you learned to, be confident and exude confidence even when 
you are kind of in a realm that you're not used to. Have you heard? The Nova Chief of Staff certification course price is going up in January of 2025. Enroll now and with lifetime access, start whenever you please. Here at Nova, it's our mission to provide the very best student experience possible. Our course is chocked full of features and resources designed just for you. Dozens of templates, self-paced online learning, hands-on practice, multiple instructor touch points, peer engagement opportunities, guest authored assignments, the list goes on. With 500 students across 22 countries, Nova is the premier destination for chief of staff learning and development. Enroll today and join us. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm a fairly naturally uh, bubbly person. Um, and so I definitely have leaned on that. Um, not necessarily to mask like my lack of confidence in some areas, but I just am easy to laugh and like go with the flow. Um, so that's always been super helpful. Um, but I also think that like I just owned it <laughs> almost like naively owned it. Right. I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm here. Let's do it. And right. that's where I was taking notes and Googling things. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. There's no other option. Um, and even with the like Mills and May services side of things, um, I just like launched it. I, I barely told anybody I was doing it. I didn't even tell my executive. Um, <laughs> and she's been amazingly supportive of it and has given me great like tips and help and all those things, but I just did it. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I may have wanted to think through a few things first, but I did it and here we are and it's been great. <laughs> um, so some of it's definitely just naively jumping into things um, and figuring it out as I go. <laughs> yeah. How did you like, is, you know, you said you're naturally a bubbly person. So mm -hmm. maybe that's part of your just personality. Um, yeah. But how did you and how have you pushed through that? Maybe it's if whether it's imposter syndrome mm -hmm. or just convincing yourself or, you know, the, I like to turn naive because you're just like, well, I'm just <laughs> I'm just going to I'm here and I'm just going to yeah. do it. And, you know, I yeah. almost like I don't know any better. I'm just going to give it a yeah. shot. Totally. So, yeah. Like what's yeah, the, I think... what's the drive behind that? Yeah. Um, I think, well, I guess it kind of started from the beginning because when I quit teaching, I thought I had, um, a job with a different virtual assistant company. And I was like, it's a sure in, like, I totally got this. And I went into my director's office <laughs> to quit the preschool position. And she got a parent phone call halfway through and had mm. to um, pause our conversation. So I went down the hallway and just like everyone does naturally just pulled up my email and I did not get the job. And so I was like, well, I'm at a crossroad. Do I go back in and beg for my job back <laughs> or do I take the leap of faith and just do it? And that's when I posted to Facebook um, a preschool headshot of myself. So we're all high quality <laughs> and said, who needs, actually, I said, who needs a virtual assistant or a personal assistant? Uh, Two very different things. I had no idea what I was doing. Right. Right. Um, and I had eight job offers in 24 hours. And so it was like, I think that totally helped my confidence of just like, totally. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I mean, I was not about to back down. So is that, do you think, cause a lot of people be like, all right, well, you're just, this is like a one in a million use case where, you know, if I post on, if I post something like that, I'm not going to get eight job offers. What was like, are you really good at networking? Mm -hmm. Have you always grown a community and a network? And that's why this, this kind of naturally happened. Tell us a little bit about totally. that. Yeah. Yes. Connecting has always been, just something that comes really naturally. Like you come up to me and say, Hey, my doorknob's falling off of my house. 
can you help me? And I'm like, I can't, but Joe down the street can, let me go get you his number. So I've always been that way. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, yeah. So I think just like networking connections and that's again, why I started Mills and May services because I saw the need for connection and networking and for business owners to really trust I mean, we know this as assistants, you, they need to trust you. This is their baby. And if they don't trust you, it's not going to be a good situation. So rather than having these business owners going to Indeed or like kind of the other um, places, I'm there to have a personal connection with them and then be like, hey, actually, this assistant that I'm coaching or helping right now um, would be an amazing fit for that. And then doing almost the like heavy lifting of networking for other people as well. Um, so yeah, it's not typical. I definitely go into <laughs> any conversation and say like, yeah, I got eight job offers in 24 hours and say, that's not normal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could try it. Well, but, I mean, yeah. You know, there's that phrase, it's kind of cheesy and cliche and whatever, but it's true yeah. in my opinion. It's your yeah. your net work is your net worth. Yes. And yeah, so totally. I think that you did that hard work of just mm -hmm. over the years connecting with people and building that. And and I get that a lot with assistants. Like, well, I don't have a LinkedIn and I haven't Yeah. I don't I don't have I've barely logged into LinkedIn and why should I do that? And whatever. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you know what? you you don't have to but there's been so many assistants in the world who have benefited mm -hmm. from being connected with other assistants yep. in the world through Absolutely. linkedin or facebook or whatever it is yeah. um so why not is kind of my thing yeah. it's like totally it's the opportunities that are out there are endless if you just put yourself out there and grow that network yeah. so yeah and also like one thing that i did as well i mean the job offers definitely came fast, but even with it, with the few minutes before I pushed send, I also did go through my friend list and was like, okay, well, who owns a business? Mm. And like, who am I going to be kind of looking out for, for viewing my post or reaching out to them? Um, because either they need help or they know someone that needs help. Cause in the business mm -hmm. world, it's all about who, you know, um, and, that's how I started it as well. I I took a look at who who do I know who might reach out, and then there were others that I was like, "Whoa, not expecting that." <laughs> yeah, um, like well, you yeah. just kind of you kind of culled your network and and were a little bit more direct and specific on, "Hey, yeah, these are the types of people in my network that might be a good fit." So that's awesome. yeah, totally. Awesome. Well, what's maybe your number one tip? All your clients are, are remote, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's your number one tip for working from home? It's <laughs> a great question. <laughs> um, and I struggle with this question. I've listened to, or I was just listening to Lisa Sprinkle's podcast. Um, and I realized that like we, we do, we all need routine get dressed in the morning, take a shower, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I think I realized, at least being a mom and being a virtual or a remote assistant, um, is just being okay to be in different seasons. Some seasons I work super late at night while the kids are in bed. Um, some seasons I get extra babysitting and childcare and I do work during the day and I block, I time block. Um, and then some seasons are a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And, um, each week looks a little different. Like I mentioned, my husband's a paramedic, so our schedule is never the same. Um, and so I really do just, I think that's the thing I've learned is in a remote assistant role, things are going to ebb and flow. And if you're like, I have a system and like, great, if that works for you, but being okay to ebb and flow and be flexible with it as well is mm -hmm. not a bad thing yeah yeah totally. awesome well uh brianne thank you so much for being on the show what's yeah. uh i like i've asked this to several of my recent uh guests on the interview or on the podcast and i'm just curious i'll put you on the spot a little bit i love it 
what if you could put a billboard put something on a billboard that all assistants mm-hmm. would see on their way to work um or maybe a facebook ad that all assistants remote assistants would see <laughs> um what what would you say to the assistants mm-hmm. of the world on that billboard oh i like that um I mean, the creative side of me is like, okay, but what graphic am I going to put with it too? Right, right. (laughs) Um, So that's where I want to start, but (laughs) I don't have that. Um, I would say work out of your passions. Even, Even though you're, I mean, not even though you're an assistant, you are an assistant, you have passions and work out of them. Um, That's when you're going to do the most effective work, the most efficient work, um, the most work that's going to grow your um, executive as well. So working out of your passions, I think would be my like big tagline. Yeah. Billboard. Nice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Something colorful too. Cause you know, that's how I roll. (laughs) Yeah. You can just, you got to pick the, you got to pick what's good, what it's going to say, and then you can uh, have fun designing it. That's totally. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Well, Brian, where's the best place for people to reach out if they want to learn more about uh, Mills and May and, and, and yeah. you and connect and say hi? Yeah. Well, I mean, you mentioned it. <laughs> LinkedIn is definitely an easy place to connect. Um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, but I feel like LinkedIn is easy. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, cool. head on over there. If you don't awesome. have a profile, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, Let's create a profile, create a profile, and connect with me and uh, Brianne, yeah. and you'll be on your way. So, uh, <laughs> I'll put the I'll put that link in your Instagram in the the show notes at leaderassistant.com yeah. slash two nine zero. And yeah, thanks again for being on the show. Best of luck to you, and uh, Thank you. happy uh, mountain trekking, yeah. even if it's not intense mountain trekking. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I'm gonna take those miles at a time. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. This was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Please review on Apple Podcasts. GoBullows.com